Again, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone. A very warm welcome to today's webinar, Sustainability Driven. I'm really excited to launch the SDG Roadmap for the tyre sector, so accelerating impact with the tyre sector SDG Roadmap. Uh, my name is Brian Hartland. I'm from ERM, and I'll be moderating the session today for WBCSD and the Tyre Industry Project, or TIP. Um, I've been working with WBCSD over the last three years to develop sectoral SDG roadmaps for seven sectors now, including the tire sector. And again, we're really excited to launch the tire sector one today with you all. So um, thanks for joining. And I'd like to cover just some of the webinar housekeeping um, before I introduce today's speakers and panelists. Um, again, we have over 200 people registered today. Um, representing a wide range of stakeholders from across um, the globe. So welcome all. Thanks for taking the time to join us. Um, due to the numbers, all attendees will be on mute and your videos will be turned off. Um, and you'll see the speakers, uh, the videos you do see on the top will be those who you'll be hearing from today. Um, we encourage you to still interact with the webinar though. So please do use the chat function. Um, type any comments or questions into the chat function and those will go to myself and WBCSD and we'll share those back as part of the Q&A at the end of the session. Um, if you have any IT or connection issues, please use the chat function as well and we'll do our best to respond to you directly um, should you have any issues there. Uh, and please note that the session is being recorded. Um, and also we ask that you don't share any confidential or sensitive information due to the range of competitors and value chain actors that we have on the call today. Um, and final note, the slides will be shared after, so please sit back and enjoy the conversation. Great, if we move to the next slide, I'll be happy to introduce, we have a great lineup of people today. We have uh, Filippo Velio, who's um, a managing director at WBCSD. Um, Filippo will share some background on the sustainable development goals, as well as WBCSD's um, sectoral work program. We have Anne-Cécile Ramon, who's the director of the Tire Industry Project. And Cecile will share some of the background on TIP and also come back near the end of the session to explain how TIP plans to implement the roadmap in its own work streams. So again, thanks for joining Anne-Cécile. We're also happy to have from uh, Bridgestone, Anna Arce, the global lead for sustainability promotion and stakeholder engagement. Um, Anna has been part of the communications working group for TIP since 2016, and she's also one of the co-chairs for the roadmap. So Anna will be introducing some of the impact pathways to us, um, which again are at the heart of the roadmap. So really looking forward to hearing from Anna on that. Um, in around 20 minutes, we'll turn to a panel session and we have, again, a great lineup. We have uh, Maureen DeSanzo, Director of Global Sustainability at Goodyear. Maureen has over two decades of experience working with the automotive and tire sectors, and she's also one of the co-chairs for the Roadmap Group, so can help bring it to life how it was actually developed. Um, we're also pleased to have Amy Smith, Director of Forest at WWF. Um, Amy has extensive knowledge and experience in responsible forest products, and she was one of the key stakeholders we engaged with, specifically on sustainable natural rubber. And we have Julia Reeds, the Vice President of Energy Environment at the Alliance for Automotive Innovation, or Auto Innovators. And again, Julia was one of the stakeholders that, that we uh, consulted with during the roadmap process. So a big welcome um, to the six of you. I'm looking forward to hearing from you in the next few moments. I'm now going to hand over to our first speaker, uh, Filippo from WBCSD, who will again um, introduce the sustainable development goals and some of WBCSD's broader work in this space. Thanks, Brian. Good day, everybody. Good afternoon, good evening, good morning. Uh, delighted to be here. And perhaps before we go into the SDGs and the roadmap, maybe very, very briefly, Brian, just the World Business Council for Sustainable Development, WBCSD, that difficult uh, acronym in a nutshell. Uh, 200 companies uh, coming together around uh, development of the business case, elaboration of the business case, deep dives around the business implications of the sustainability uh, agenda, uh, underpinned by the belief that more sustainable companies uh, will be uh, more successful and are already uh, more successful. Uh, we are headquartered in Geneva with offices in, in five other locations across the world. Uh, 200 companies from about 20 industry sectors, of course, delighted to have uh, 11 of them as the leading tire uh, companies. Uh, and if you look at headquarter locations, a little bit more than 40 uh, countries in terms of that uh, sort of country uh, representation. So uh, delighted to be here today and share a few perspectives around how we look at these sustainable uh, development uh, goals. 
another one of these uh, acronyms. The Sustainable Development Goals, as we know, uh, six years in the making, nine years only uh, to go, this critical decade of action as it has been defined, 2020 to 2030, what is the role of business, the opportunity of business, but also the responsibility of business to contribute uh, to this agenda. Our fundamental message here is that this agenda will not be delivered uh, without the key uh, input solutions, processes um, from uh, the business side, businesses of all sizes, of all sectors, and of course, um, across uh, all uh, geographies. Why? Because the SDGs really point to transformation, point to ambition, point to universal implications across countries and across actors in society. And of course, on the business side, uh, we all know the role of business uh, as an engine of employment. We all know the, the innovation and technological uh, capabilities that business can bring to the table, the finance uh, angle to it, but also on the responsibility side, the responsibility to respect human rights across uh, operations and business relationships. So fundamental message in that particular context. The context of course of today is also a context of COVID-19 for the next slide, uh, please. Uh, my colleagues, uh, the, co the context of COVID-19, of course, this agenda has suffered a, a setback, is suffering a setback. We are way off from uh, reaching the end of, of the tunnel. There is some light, but many, many, many more years of, of suffering, unfortunately, and, and significant impacts on uh, this agenda. And our message here, again, is from the World Business Council side, uh, important to keep the SDGs as the overall uh, universal, ready-made universal framework that has been articulated, that is uh, coherently articulated, including at the level of the interconnections. SDG 3, very much the focus today, but think of the implications uh, on uh, the jobs agenda, on the poverty agenda, on inequality, on gender, and so many uh, other agendas that are dear uh, to that uh, SDGs agenda. So keep keeping the SDGs at the core of the response is a fundamental message that we would like to add at the outset of this particular uh, webinar. If we look at the next uh, slide, diving into then, uh, so what for business in terms of their role and the opportunity and responsibility from the World Business Council side, uh, we're looking back just a few years at an articulation across many institutions and businesses of what is ultimately a business case. Is there a business case for a better business and for a better world? Happy to point you to that uh, outstanding sort of piece of research at the macroeconomic level of the business case for uh, the SDGs. And uh, out of that emerged a number of recommendations, including the recommendation for companies, for businesses to really work within their own sector uh, to articulate that contribution. Where are the positive impacts? Where can uh, negative, possible negative impacts be mitigated across the value chain? How can a collective roadmap uh, be established looking a little bit further down the road heading into 2030? On the back of that, WBCSD together with ERM and, and many of our members has been working a on the articulation of what we call a roadmap a guidelines. So how do you articulate a roadmap as a sector? Uh, we have established uh, those uh, guidelines a, a few uh, years ago. And on the back of those guidelines, really going into the practical side. WBCSD is about getting uh, sustainability done, about making it actionable. And this is what we did across a number of sectors on the next slide, uh, please. Uh, we started the roadmap testing, let's say, uh, with the chemical uh, sector a number of leading companies and industry associations who uh, supported these uh, early stage uh, processes. Uh, ERM was a core part of that uh, process from uh, day one. And we have expanded, as you can see, the sectors from the chemical uh, to the forest sector, uh, to the electric utilities sector, and to the oil and gas uh, sector, uh, most notably. So four pieces of work regrouping uh, several dozen companies across the spectrum of our uh, organization and very much with the ambition of identifying, articulating and realizing the SDGs. How is it going to come about at sector level and what are the most impactful opportunities uh, for companies to articulate uh, that contribution and frame it uh, under a leadership uh, perspective and under a call to action that is followed up. So again, it's not about writing a report, but it's really about establishing that road. So Brian, I hope I didn't take too long, but uh, spontaneous a few remarks up front. And I'm actually handing back to Anne Cecile, if I may directly, is that okay? I hand That's directly perfect, to thank you, Filippo. Okay. You Cecile, may, Filippo, you. thank you very much. Thanks a lot for setting the scene on this important framework that are the SDGs for action globally and the SDG roadmap. So my name is Anne Cecile Raymond. I lead the tire industry project, so part of WBCST. And to complete this, 
background before we go into the roadmap itself, I'll just say a few words about TIP. So if you could go to the next slide. TIP or the Tire Industry Project is a CEO-led initiative that was created in 2005 by 11 tire manufacturers. Um, and the key mission of TIP is to carry out research on some of the key um, uh, potential issues human health and environmental uh, issues associated to the tire life cycle. TIP operates under the umbrella of the WBCSD. So we were talking about acronyms. You already had quite a few until now, but more to come very soon. Um, TIP has 11 members, which I will show to you in a second. Together, they represent more than 60% of global tire production, and they work together through working groups to carry out research on topics such as tire and roadwear particles, end of life tire, or to develop tools and frameworks for the industry to be more sustainable. Um, if you can go to the next slide, Rosie, please, you'll see the, the members of TIP. Um, so we have representation from the various region with uh, North America, for example, with Cooper Tires and Goodyear. We have European members with Continental, Michelin, and Pirelli. And we have Asian members uh, with Bridgestone, Hankook, Kumo, Sumitomo, Toyo, and Yokohama. So with that context, why an SDG roadmap? Um, you've heard it from Filippo. Um, the SDG will require action from everyone to, to be completed by 2030. Um, and there's clearly an expectation that business plays a key leading role in this. Uh, there's also a, a high uh, understanding that there's an opportunity for business uh, to find solution to achieve the SDGs in terms of innovation and economic growth. But sustainability and SDG related issues are complex. Um, they're sometimes difficult to navigate. It's hard to see where one can have the biggest impact. It's hard to see um, how to achieve this impact as well. What are the actions that need to be taken at individual company level? What are the ones that necessitate a broader engagement from stakeholders? What are the ones that require a full value chain approach? So these are all questions that are difficult to navigate as an individual organization. Um, so in that context, uh, and recognizing that TIP is part of the WBCSD that actually developed the sector roadmap guideline, doing an SDG roadmap seemed to be a good way to help answer some of those questions. So recognizing the, the value of doing such an exercise, the 11 CEOs of TIP that you see on the slide here have approved the development of the roadmap back uh, at the end of 2019. Fast forward uh, 18 months, we're now uh, launching the roadmap today, so we are very excited to, to share it with you. Um, the, the, um, as an existing global forum for, for uh, tire makers, TIP was you know, well positioned to develop the roadmap. It was also quite a, a symbolic exercise for us because TIP has been around for 15 years. I mentioned it, it was created in 2005. So doing the SDG roadmap was also a good way to take stock of what has been done in the last 15 years and look forward to the, ne to the next decade and, and the road to 2030. So we're really excited to share the roadmap with you today. You see that we've uh, included some print screen of the CEOs of TIP. We thought it was safer in a Zoom environment to show you the print screen rather than the video, but this is actually a video that is available on the website uh, that you see on the screen here. So sustainabilitydriven.info. And we really encourage you to go and visit the website to hear from the CEOs why they thought doing an SDG roadmap was a good idea and what are their expectations on, on the roadmap. So with that, uh, Brian, I'll hand it over back to you to tell us more about the roadmap itself. Perfect. Thank you, and Cecile. Thank you, Filippo. And um, that's really helpful background. We do have over 200 people on the call today, um, and it's quite a, a diverse uh, background, some who are just learning about the goals and some who are experts. Um, and so that's great to share with everyone. Um, so again, as mentioned, the roadmap is just being launched today. Very few people will have seen the details. What we wanted to do was show you some of the highlights. Um, so when you do download um, the document from sustainability-driven.info will help you navigate um, around the roadmap. 
So um, firstly, I want to touch on the three-step framework that we have followed to develop the roadmap. Um, so this three-step framework was developed um, by WBCSD. It's openly available on their website, um, a framework to develop sectoral roadmaps for, to achieve the sustainable development goals. Um, this is what the other sectors have used as well, um, again, to bring consistency and the same level of credibility and robustness to the roadmaps. They've all followed the same process. So at a high level, there's three steps. The first is to establish the sector's current position. Um, this is done through research, um, mapping and expert engagement to really understand how the sector is interacting with all of the 17 sustainable development goals, and then identify where it can have the greatest impact. Um, we use this step to really help prioritize which goals the sector can have the greatest ability to impact. Again, to help focus efforts rather than trying to um, you know, trying to um, go after all 17 goals with the equal amount of effort. Um, Action two, uh, or sorry, step two is to identify key opportunities to minimize negative impacts and maximize positive impact, as well as a series of tangible actions that the sector and its stakeholders can take to actually achieve these opportunities. So this is collecting some of the big ideas of what the sector should start doing, what it should stop doing, what it should continue to do, and then laying out a more tangible action plan on, on how that needs to happen on the lead up to 2030. And again, the roadmap outlines this and we'll show you in a bit more detail. And the final step is the call to action, which includes ideas on the engagement plans and statements on what's next for the roadmap. Um, we really don't want the roadmap to be um, just a document we want it to be living, hence the, the website where people can share information and updates can be made on a more regular basis. We move to the next slide. Um, so we mentioned the member companies who are part of TIP, but we did want to share as well um, the external stakeholders who we consulted um, throughout the roadmap development process. Um, we have the regional tire trade associations who I'm sure many of you are familiar with um, from the US, Europe, Japan, and Korea. And we have a number of external stakeholders who um, who we engage to hear both the voice of customers and suppliers, but then also to go deeper on some topics where we wanted more subject matter expertise, such as human rights, um, for example. Um, I won't read through the logos. I'm sure most of them um, are familiar to many of you. And we're very fortunate today to have um, Julia and Amy representing the first two organizations you see on your screen under section two. Right, and it, on the next slide, again, when you download the roadmap, um, there are four main chapters. Um, I won't touch on the executive summary, but when you go into the SDGs and the tire sector, the information in here will outline the industry and the value chain that was um, included within the scope of the roadmap, again, bringing that to life, um, um, who is it for? We'll talk more about the tire composition for those who may not be experts to help, again, understand some of the, the technical aspects. Um, we cover TIP milestones, so the work that's been done to date that led up to the roadmap development, as well as sustainability megatrends that are impacting the tire sector. We also have more detail on the roadmap process. I covered the three steps at quite a high level. Um, this, this second chapter will go into more detail and also outlining what are the priority SDGs for the sector, which I'll cover um, in a moment. Um, the heart to the roadmap is chapter three, so the impact pathways. Um, these consist of seven opportunities where the sector can have the most impact. Again, these were developed through extensive engagement with the member group, but also external stakeholders. Um, Anna from, from Bridgestone will help take us through these in a moment. And then the final part of the roadmap is the road to 2030. And this will talk about TIP's work program and then communications and next steps for the roadmap. On um, the slide, I wanted to, well, maybe I'll start with, um, you know, there's acknowledgement and we recognize that the tire sector, like most, will interact with all 17 sustainable development goals. However, uh, the purpose of the roadmap is to focus on areas where the sector can have the greatest potential to lead, influence, and accelerate action to make progress towards tw the 2030 agenda. As such, we identified these eight goals as priority, as where the sector can have the highest impact through collective multi-stakeholder action. So recognizing, again, that not one company um, can do this on their own. We, we need um, that collective multi-stakeholder action and to really focus. Um, there were two goals that uh, mapped against the roadmap actions most frequently. Um, so again, we've highlighted those here. We have 
um, SDG 8, decent work and economic growth, and 12, responsible consumption and production. Great. Um, so now I'm going to hand over to um, Anna Arce from Bridgestone, who will take us through the seven impact pathways to introduce you to some of the, um, uh, the content within the roadmap. Thank you, Brian. Um, hello, everyone. I would like to give you a highlight of what you can find in the, in the roadmap. So as Brian well said, we identify seven impact pathways where the tech sector can have the most transformative impact. And we divided those um, according to our value chain. So the first two that you will see here under supply chain include a natural rubber and sustainable practices. So let me just spend a minute here under a natural rubber value chain. If you think about it, 70% 70, 70 of natural rubber is used by tire sector globally, and 85% of that is produced by 6 million smallholders. So what we're looking with this particular impact pathway through our actions is to ensure a more sustainable, inclusive economic growth, but totally in alignment with the global platform for sustainable natural rubber or GPSNR. Um, GPSNR was launched in 2018. It was supported by TIP CEOs and it provides a multi stakeholder forum, um, including uh, smallholders, of course, through which actions can be taken to drive that um, sustainable natural rubber value chain further. The second impact pathway that you see here talks about the implementation of sustainable procurement practices. Um, tires, as you can imagine, contain more than 100 different materials. And this is beyond just natural rubber, right? We're including um, synthetic rubber, carbon black, silica, chemicals, cables, you name it. So this pathway in particular outlines actions that as a sector, we can take to scale impact into the supply chain. And we're talking, for example, um, developing and driving sustainable procurement practices, policies, and implementations. Um, if we go to the next one, Rosie, please. Here we have two particular impact pathways under operations. Um, when we talk about uh, improvement of environmental impacts, we're talking about low carbon emissions, for example. We understand that there are 177 companies, 76 countries, eight US states that have made net zero pledges already, but there's more urgent action needed here. So this pathway in particular outlines actions for the sector to take and tackle climate change and ensure the sustainable use of our resources. Impact pathway number four talks about promoting diversity and healthy working environments. We understand as a sector the role that we have to play. And we know that significant growth, productivity, and performance improvements are um, available to companies that are committed to improve diversity and inclusion practices. So this particular pathway outlines actions that the sector should take, such as increase diversity and inclusion into the talent pool and make sure that there's women representation throughout the industry. Rosie, can we go to the next one, please? In terms of products and services, this will be the set of three impact pathways, uh, the last three impact pathways. We talk about working with others to address tire roadware particles. Um, stakeholders are interested sometimes and they associate TRWP as we call it uh, with things such as microplastics or air quality for example. So it presents an opportunity for the sector to engage and drive um, diverse uh, groups of stakeholders and experts to contribute to evidence-based um, opportunities here. So in this particular pathway, we include actions that the sector can take to drive that progress. It's important to mention that currently within TIP, we have a tier WP working group that has a very robust agenda to try to drive um, Science driven, um, a science driven approach around tar road work particles. And what we would like is to have all that um, information and all that development um, of standards and methodologies and definitions to be at the service of the stakeholders uh, with widely adoption. Um, impact pathway number six is um, intended to kind of accelerate that sustainable, sustainable mobility transition. So when we think about it, our sector contributes and play an indispensable role in ensuring safe mobility. And we will continue to do that, um, but in the context of innovations, including rapid digitalization and automation, for example, 
this particular pathway outlines actions that the sector can take to work with the stakeholders to support and accelerate that transition to a future mobility solution that are both safe and low carbon for the industry. And finally, impact pathway number seven talks about promotion of or promoting circular economy and ensuring sustainable ELT management. ELT stands for end of life tires. Um, we understand that there are major opportunities that exist for the tire companies to improve our business value, cost savings, for example, access to new markets and more. So in this particular pathway, we are developing um, new tire um, related innovations, let's call it as a core area of, of competition. So we understand that there is some uh, potential conflict there of, of, for us as tire manufacturers, but this pathway definitely identifies opportunities for legally permissible collaborations among the stakeholders. So um, it identifies opportunities that both individual companies can choose to pursue or if we want to collaborate with different um, stakeholders within our value chain. Rosie, if we go to the next one, please. What we have here basically is uh, what you will see throughout the document. If you open the PDF, if you open the roadmap, you will see this for every single impact pathway. So the first thing you see here is the, the title of that impact pathway, the ones that we just saw, this is example number four. Um, you will have a relevance or, the, or a brief explanation, a preamble about that specific impact pathway. Then you will have the priority SDGs targets. And this is important. We're not necessarily calling here just the SDG number three, for example, we're going all the way to the target. So it's 3.6 um, just to, I'll give you an example. And then you will have a table. That table will include the list of actions that are specific for that particular impact pathway. And then a set of information that are the actions to drive that particular impact. So you will have the level of impact on the goal if it's uh, low, medium, or high, for example. The time to impact that goal if it's within the short, medium, or long term the tire sector contribution if we are um, leading, accelerating, or influencing that particular action, and then the SDG target contribution. So you will see a list on the far uh, right on that table of all of the targets within the SDGs that that particular action will be contributing towards. Underneath that, you will see a list of, of stakeholders that have been identified to drive that uh, list of actions and to impact um, and to work towards that particular impact pathway. It's not included here, but you will also find in the document list or examples of best practice business cases um, that show how the industry have been um, committed so far, things that we're doing great. We know that we can always do more, but that is a reference of things that are happening right now or commitments that the industry and the TIP members have made so far. If we go to the next one. And this is a slide uh, that is uh, really important. So we understand, as Anne Cecile mentioned before, that uh, TIP has a specific scope right now, but this roadmap was developed for TIP, from TIP for the sector. Um, it includes impact pathways that we already talked about, the actions and best practices, but this is to the service of the industry of the sector. So how, we, how can we use that um, roadmap? Actions for the sector, anybody within the value chain can reference the document, uh, see the actions, understand the examples that we are including in this document and use them. There is no specific targets defined beyond the ones that the SDGs already include. And this is important. Um, there are actions that are for the individual companies. For example, we are members of TIP. So even if, um, if we're members or not of TIP, we can, go to the document, use it as a reference, and apply that as part of our strategies or um, programs planning and, and so on. And there are actions that are specifically for TIP, as I mentioned with the example of um, tire road wear particles, TRWP, we have a specific working group that has already included many of the actions as part of the agenda and the, and the working group um, commitments, for example. So TIP members are um, some sort of work, uh, committed or working towards those actions already as part of the TIP scope. So just to recap, TIP is acting on some of these uh, lists of opportunities already as part of the agenda that we have. 
their actions for the individual TIP members to tackle and to act on individually and their actions that are free for all the sector. Overall, the message uh, we want to convey is that collaboration is needed for a, for a better, uh, more sustainable future for the industry. We need collaboration, whether that is within the TAP uh, platform, whether that is through individual companies or the sector as a whole. And I think that's my last slide. Great. Yeah. Thank you, Anna, for bringing that to life. And so please do look at the roadmap. Um, as Anna mentioned, each of the impact, seven impact pathways are outlined in more detail. Um, we're now going to move to the panel discussion um, and we'll stop sharing the slides so you can see um, the four of us <laughs> a little bit closer up. So we have myself, Julia, Amy and Maureen. So again, a big welcome to our panelists today. Thank you for joining. Um, my, my first question is for um, Maureen. Um, so again, thanks for joining today. And I should just note that the questions um, are partly for people who registered in advance, you had the option to put in questions um, that you did want to cover. Um, so we tried to work those into the panel. Um, the other questions coming in now through the chat, we'll try to cover as many as we can through the Q&A at the end. And if, and if we don't get to them all, we'll re respond um, after the webinar with a response. Um, but Maureen, um, the first question is for you. Um, so I'm hoping you could take us back to over a year or 18 months ago um, when the roadmap was started and what motivated um, TIP and its members to initiate the development of the roadmap. And I guess, um, secondly to that, um, how would you like to see the roadmap used by TIP members and then the broader sector um, as a whole? Sure, Brian. Um, thank you for the question and hello to everyone on the call. Thanks for joining us today. Um, as you heard Anne Cecile describe earlier, TIP already existed as a forum for the tire industry on sustainability. So we really were well positioned to tackle developing the roadmap. And TIP members certainly recognize that the SDGs are complex issues that will require contributions from multiple stakeholders to be able to achieve. So we knew that following the roadmap development process would really help us outline where those opportunities are for the entire value chain to align so that we can collectively have a greater impact on those goals. Um, and I guess as you think about the tire sector value chain, I, I do wanna highlight that it's not obviously just tire manufacturers, but also suppliers and customers and consumers as well and many additional stakeholders across the life cycle of a tire. So as you heard Anna describe, the benefit of the roadmap is that it helps value chain actors focus those efforts, uh, you know, because it outlines specific actions that can help accelerate progress to the goals. Um, to the second part of your question, mm -hmm. you know, we'd like to see this roadmap help guide and inform decision-making across the entire value chain. Um, we hope it will encourage stakeholder dialogue around these challenging goals and also inspire action-oriented stakeholder, I'm sorry, action-oriented initiatives across um, industry peers and, and broadly. As, um, as TIP specifically, I think Anna mentioned this, but the roadmap will be leveraged to help us inform our ongoing efforts as we continue to proactively identify and address the potential human health and environmental impacts associated with life cycle of tires. And for individual companies, Goodyear included, the roadmap helps inform our strategies and identify key stakeholders to engage in developing those solutions. So, so really, regardless of where companies are in the journey, we hope that the roadmap can be leveraged to validate ongoing initiatives, to inform new efforts, and also to help communicate the impact that um, value chain actors are having on making progress to the goals. Great, thank you, Maureen, and, and great advice. Uh, again, we do have um, a mix of organizations on the line today, and I'm sure lots of others will download the roadmap, so it's good to give them some insight of how they could use it to shape their own activities, their own strategies, and, and to align and, and to really um, challenge what they're doing to see if there are any gaps. So, so thanks for sharing that, Maureen. Um, Julia, next wanted to go over to you. Um, so obviously you were one of, your organization was one of the stakeholders that were consulted during the roadmap development. As well, we spoke to nonprofits, the regional tire trade associations and others. Um, how do you think your members who are quite a range um, from vehicle manufacturers to original equipment suppliers and others, how do you think they can use and benefit from the roadmap? Yeah, thanks, Brian. Well, maybe I should start off by saying a little bit about who Auto Innovators yeah, is. Do. And uh, we represent automakers in the United States that produce and sell about 
99% of the new light duty vehicles. And then as you mentioned, also original equipment suppliers and technology and mobility companies. And you know, you, using that stat or by rough estimation, we rely on about 99% of the new tires sold into the US as well for our products. Mm -hmm. And for decades, automakers have been working to reduce emissions, increase fuel economy, and produce safer automobiles. And our partners in the tire industry have played a key role here as well. And it may seem really silly to say, but vehicles rely on tires. They literally will not move without them. And so tires are fundamental to meeting our performance, durability, safety, and fuel efficiency requirements. And, and therefore we rely on our partners in the tire industry to play a key role in the design and continuous improvement of the tires supplied to our automakers and to our collective customers. This roadmap shows not only the commitment of the tire industry in proactively setting these sustainability goals, but it provides clear and concrete actions and measurable milestones for the industry, which we can reference. More specifically for our automakers, the SDGs and this report provide us with insight through a comprehensive and forward-looking vision. It strengthens an already strong working relationship between the tire industry and the automakers. And the roadmap gives us insight into how the important work the tire industry is doing will ensure that when people do drive, that we've maximized the improvements that lead to safer and more environmentally sustainable driving. Great, thank you, Julia. That's um, you know a, a great steer for again how your members who are quite diverse can use the roadmap. And again, I know we have a diverse group on the line today, so I hope that inspires you to again how to make this document um, useful for you, for yourselves. Um, next, over to Amy from WWF. Uh, again, thanks for joining today. Um, so you have been working for a number of years in responsible forest products trade, and you're currently working with WWF um, on the topics, um, in particular with natural rubber, but also other forest products. Um, what do you think makes the tire sector roadmap valuable um, to stakeholders such as yourself? And second to that, um, can you envisage uh, um, the roadmap potentially helping to scale or accelerate any of the current activities or initiatives that are already underway. Yeah, thanks. And thanks for the invitation to participate today. Um, for those of you who don't know um, anything about WWF, we're one of the largest environmental organizations in the world. We have a vision of a world in which people and nature thrive, um, and we work to conserve nature and reduce the most pressing threats to the diversity of life on earth. So for us, the SDGs are very relevant. Um, we see nature as essential to delivering on all of the SDGs. Only with nature-based solutions can we actually have peaceful, prosperous, and equitable societies. Um, nature provides valuable resources, air, water, energy, food, um, in addition, it can be harnessed um, to create solutions that address the challenges mm -hmm. set out in the SDGs. And these solutions are positive for economic, governance, social, and environmental outcomes. So part of our calls to action include uh, calls to business. And uh, I was glad to see Filippo say that the SDGs won't be delivered without business. We, we wholeheartedly agree with that. So to say, you know, having a roadmap uh, such as the one that that uh, TIP has has WBCSD has focused on for the tire sector, I think is very um, useful to help to look at what the sector's role is in delivering on the SDGs. Um, effectively implementing this roadmap uh, would mean that the sector could make a real contribution to ending deforestation, increasing forest cover, uh, ending poverty, and creating decent jobs. Um, establishing sustainable production and consumption systems and sustaining healthy ecosystems and climate for generations to come. So this is, this is a really um, important role for the sector. The next step of course, is to, to focus on um, what Anna mentioned, the, the looking at the goals and the targets and the progress tracking, the KPIs, all of that, like how, how is progress happening? What are actions are being undertaken to actually make this roadmap effective? Um, and so I will just say that my comments today will be focused through the lens of sustainable natural rubber because that's been my engagement with the, the tire sector in particular through the GPSNR. Um, and, and, and if we take this to um, the work that the tire sector has been engaging on in the GPSNR, 
um, and think about some of those kind of individual company efforts and how those could actually support the entire sector. I think there's an opportunity um, for, for tire makers to make a niche for themselves by developing winning approaches for these, these specific topics that are necessary to deliver on sustainable natural rubber and you know, to feed into the delivery of the SDGs. Um, so specifically things like uh, supply chain transparency, developing effective mechanisms for supply chain transparency, um, identifying capacity building needs for smallholders, um, developing high conservation value or high carbon stock map uh, carbon stock maps for um, key rubber producing areas that could be used by the industry. But but essentially, it, like developing those winning approaches could then be shared with the entire industry. And the platform G GPS and R offers that opportunity to make scale these actions, right? Like we need these actions to be happening, um, um, to, to be happening at a, a, mm -hmm. a collective um, scale. And we've seen companies in other sectors do things like that. I um, I read in the last week, uh, a, a company in the chocolate, the chocolate company, Barry Kayabo, um, worked together with an AI company to, um, and now has developed some AI maps of high carbon stock areas in Indonesia and Malaysia, um, and the Philippines, and this actually avoids some of the high costs of doing that mapping on the ground and with aerial photography, um, and has made that that information publicly available. So that can serve the, the it, competitors, you know, the entire sector, but also other sectors. And I think that's a role that the tire uh, the tire industry can can take on here too. You know, making these contributions can not only benefit the sector, but can ben benefit. Um, it can make progress towards the SDGs and actually, you know, be for the greater good. Mm -hmm. Great. Uh, thank you, Amy. Thanks for providing a bit more background about WWF and also GPSNR, which is um, obviously linked to Impact Pathway 1 in the roadmap. So that's really helpful to bring it to life. Um, I, I want to circle back to Maureen. Um, so obviously um, on the panel, you're, you're the one who's been enveloped in kind of the day-to-day -day process in developing this. Um, could you share some thoughts on what do you think um, have been the most challenging elements of undertaking the roadmap? And I guess any um, welcome your feedback on how the group overcame these. Sure, thanks, Brian. And I mean, I guess we'll start with developing the roadmap 100% virtually in the middle of a global pandemic <laughs> certainly presented some challenges for us, especially when you consider that the 11 global members of TIP each have their own way of communicating on sustainability topics. So there, there was quite a bit of back and forth as we worked to develop a common language for the roadmap, but we were, of course, were able to overcome that and align on the final content. And now we have a consistent framework that we can reference going forward. So I think that'll be really helpful. Um, maybe one other challenge I can highlight is um, identifying the right stakeholders to help inform the roadmap development. A few of them are, are here with us today. And it was important for us to make sure that we engage those stakeholders in the process. Um, we wanted to make sure they represented our end-to-end -end value chain. So from raw materials such as natural rubber to our automotive customers and consumers. And we wanted to make sure that we had stakeholders who had specific knowledges, uh, specific knowledge around the challenges associated with achieving the SDGs. Uh, to help with this, we certainly leveraged the support of our trade associations. So they have a broad perspective on the impact of our sector that was really helpful. And we also engaged organizations that collectively represented our supply chain and customers. And it was of course important to make sure that we had those that have extensive knowledge on environmental and social topics related to our sector. So we, it could contribute to, um, to our knowledge as we develop the roadmap. Um, in the end, I think collectively, we feel our, our stakeholder input and guidance really helped ensure we had the complete picture and um, including their input in the development helps provide credibility to the final outcome of the roadmap as well. Great, thanks Maureen. I think you're absolutely right. Having the right mix of expertise available throughout the roadmap process um, was key um, to getting the input and refining the content. Um, so, so that's some great pointers from the process. Thank you for that. Um, Next, um, I have the same question for all of you. So maybe um, it'll be for Julia, Amy, and Maureen. Um, but at the start of the session, we heard Filippo explain how the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic has caused significant disruptions to uh, progress of the sustainable development goals. Um, and so that's at the global macro level. Curious for, from your own experiences and networks with 
the different stakeholders. Do you feel priorities for the sector have shifted in any way in the last year? And are there any elements of the roadmap that are even more important um, coming out of this, or hopefully coming out of this pandemic soon that need even greater focus? And maybe start, um, Julia, with you, any thoughts on that? I suppose it helps if I unmute for my response. Um, yeah, so, you know, if anything, I think the COVID-19 pandemic has demonstrated how important something like the SDGs are going forward. I mean, during this time period, nearly every business has faced unknown challenges, had to reshift priorities, and really do what was necessary to keep the economy running, whether it's in the U.S. or, or globally. Mm -hmm. But these short-term changes, I, I don't think that they detract from the longer vision um, that the TIP company have created through the roadmap. And if anything, this period of time really emphasized how important today's investments will be in creating a safer and cleaner future for transportation. Um, just by way of example, Auto Innovators during this time has, has looked at our priorities and created an innovation agenda that's really aimed at the key demand and supply side policies needed to increase electric and automated technologies and ultimately support a growing and resilient supply chain and manufacturing sector and provide more economic certainty for the workforce in the US. And I think in the same way, we see that these SDGs provide an overall comprehensive vision that's going to lay a foundation for work going forward. And, and so anything that has happened or has, has reshifted priorities, I don't think detracts from this mm -hmm. longer vision. And ultimately, it keeps us aligned in looking at the key elements to support workers, to provide environmental benefits, and really just to ensure that we're continuing a proactive approach uh, within our industry. Mm -hmm. Thank you. No, great thoughts, Julia. Um, Amy, over to you. Obviously, um, I guess you represent a different type of stakeholders than Julia. Curious your thoughts on, uh, again, what have you seen in the last year and how has that impacted in particular the, the rubber value chain? So I, I would say that I echo <clears throat> what Julia started off with, that, that the pandemic has really highlighted the need for mm -hmm. the SDGs. Um, and, and I think those in particular that relate to human health and well-being, um, you know, in, in the rubber sector, the majority of rubber, as, as Anna pointed out, is, is produced by small farmers. And many of the small farmers are living at or below the poverty line. So this has really highlighted the need to engage with those those communities um, that have been very hard hit by the pandemic, they often don't have access to adequate mm -hmm. health care. In fact, I, I, in some of the places where we work on rubber with local communities, our teams have requested to donors that there's been, uh, you know, that there's an opportunity to shift some of the budget from, from sustainable rubber activities to, to actually address the crisis, the health crisis that they're facing. Um, so it just really um, accentuates that that the importance of that and the and the role of the rubber sector in driving mm -hmm. equity um, throughout the supply chain, in particular to those who are most vulnerable, uh, those communities and rubber producing communities. Um, so it, that's one thing. But I would I would say the other the other aspect of the SDGs that the pandemic has highlighted um, is the direct relationship between forest health and human health. And there's scientific evidence that shows that deforestation drives the risk for disease outbreak. So the deforestation and forest degradation that happens when land is cleared for commodity production, like rubber plantations, it contributes to the disturbance of habitat, it um, affects wildlife health, it increases the potential for human wildlife or um, wildlife domestic animal interaction, and all of this raises the potential for zoonotic disease transmission. Mm -hmm. So the more we can do to ensure that forests remain standing, natural forests remain standing, um, the better chance we have at curbing uh, the, another pandemic. Mm -hmm. um, and and you know this is this is where I think the tire industry can make a real impact in focusing on those those efforts uh, that are that are happening through the GPSNR and the individual commitments and implementation of those commitments by by tire companies and others in the rubber value chain to, um, to avoid deforestation, to protect forests, to restore forests. Um, that actually not only has uh, significant environment, environmental benefits you know, for climate, water, um, ecosystem health, but uh, biodiversity, but also um, really has an impact on human health as well. Mm -hmm. 
No, thank you for the background, Amy. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense and that it's more important than ever, in particular for some of the smallholders in some of the regions already facing challenges. Um, so Maureen, same question to you um, in the sense of have priorities shifted at all or do you think any of the uh, aspects of the roadmap are more important? Yeah, thanks, Brian. And I have to say, you know, I agree with everything that Julia and Amy said, right? So for the tire sector, I wouldn't say that they've shifted, but the pandemic mm -hmm. definitely highlighted areas where there's a need to accelerate progress. Mm -hmm. um, some of the actions in the roadmap already identified opportunities that really were brought into focus during the, during the pandemic. Um, supply chain resiliency, um, as was highlighted, is a really good example of that. Uh, as you heard, one of the, the pathways in the roadmap highlights our, oppor our opportunities in the natural rubber belt um, supply chain, as Amy described. Mm -hmm. um, and it, they certainly face challenges with mm -hmm. the demand shock that impacted their ability to sell to factories. So there's definitely ongoing opportunity for the sector to further support this critical aspect of our natural, um, our natural rubber value chain as well. Mm -hmm. Great, thank you. I, I think uh, yeah, the key word everyone's saying is time to accelerate action. So happy to hear that um, everyone from your diverse backgrounds are all thinking around those the same lines. Um, anyway, we have two more questions in the panel. Again, I'm trying to feed in some of the questions coming through the chat. For those that we don't get to, um, we will respond offline. Um, so we do see your questions coming in, but there is a long list, so we can't get to them all. Um, but again, we will respond offline to all the questions coming in. Um, the next question is for Julia. So your role at Auto Innovators includes engagement on a broad range of issues. Um, so I, I won't attempt to cover them all, but it is quite diverse. Um, I was wondering which impact pathways in the roadmap do you think present the most opportunity for your members um, to collaborate more with the tire sector? Um, where do you think are the biggest win-wins? Right. Well, I, I, I want to take the unfair answer and say really all of the impact okay. pathways are important for <laughs> mm -hmm. us. Um, but from a really high level, the auto industry is committed to the goals of net zero carbon and safer roadways. And we have dedicated efforts underway, in particular in the US, US to advance technologies like electric uh, electric vehicles and connectivity, but but those aren't the only areas where we are doing work to improve uh, the environmental footprint of our vehicles. And the impact pathways identified by the report are really necessary to our overarching goals. Everything from the environmental, environmental management to sustainability, supply chains and workforce piece is really critical to supporting our overall goals. Um, but I will say, in particular for the issue sets that I work on, we really appreciate the TIPS efforts to consider the waterways, debris, and the end of life aspects of the product in these service, uh, in these pathways. While it may often seem, and even from my remarks, that electric vehicles are the only environmental focus for transportation these days, the reality is across the US at the state level, there's growing attention to these new areas of potential impact and having our partners in the tire industry actively taking on and looking to assess these aspects through their impact pathways is really critical to the ability to address potential concerns. Mm -hmm. Thus, I, I, I would say all of the impact pathways are really, really important, but we really appreciate the proactive view of the tire industry uh, and, and, and the fact that it's absolutely key for our partners who know the product, know the content, are taking on the work and collaborating with us to make sure that collectively we're meeting our goals going forward. Great, thank you, Julia. And um, we'll go to our final question um, to Amy and, um, and um, if you could keep it brief, just due to the timing, so we can end on time. But um, one of the for the impact pathway one, um, it, it does focus on the the natural rubber value chain, and it has actions to align and commit to GPSNR um, policy framework and implementation guidance. I was hoping you could just bring that to life for us a bit more. What does that actually mean, um, or what could people see in that implementation guidance? Sure, thanks. Thanks for the question, and I will do my best to be brief. Mm -hmm. um, so in the last General Assembly in October of 2020, the GPSNR voted to adopt a policy framework, which is a, a rigorous set of commitments that company members are required to include in their policies. Um, these are social, environmental, economic commitments, and, um, and those policies are to be made public 
And now we're working on developing the implementation guidance to support companies in their sustainability journey. So drawing on the, the lessons learned and the guidance out there for other commodities, much of which is valuable and can be used in the, in the GPS and R implementation guidance. And we're defining what the requirements of members are in terms of implementation, how much progress mm -hmm. uh, will need to be demonstrated and, and how will that be done? What are the assurance What's the assurance system going to look like? So all of those pieces, and it's a lot of work, and it's it's a lot of uh, it's a heavy technical lift, but that is happening under under this in this multi-stakeholder um, environment, and um, and I think the other piece that's really important here is is the reporting requirements piece and the and the disclosure and what companies will need to. Uh, show to demonstrate that they're imp they're effectively implementing their commitments and they're making progress. That's also being developed. Um, this is something is that is is critical to GPS and R delivering its goals. And this is you know all aligned with the SDGs. Um, what companies have to dis disclose regarding what they're doing in improving production practices, protecting forests and high conservation values, um, uphold you know improving um, community livelihoods. Um, protecting human and labor rights, et cetera. And, and, and I think that um, there's been some resistance to, to disclosing some information, but what we've seen in other sectors is that there's been this movement towards greater levels of transparency. And that's a call that's coming, you know, for greater transparency, it's not only coming from organizations like mine in the civil society sector, but, but also um, financial institutions are making this part of their their ESG mm -hmm. uh, rating systems, you know, greater transparency. And really without that transparency, we can't have sustainability. Mm -hmm. So these are two important pieces of work that are being developed um, and, and are anticipated. Um, and I suspect that will take, you know, another six to 12 months mm -hmm. to, to get that. Great. Well, we'll be looking out for those. And, and you're right, transparency and disclosure across all topics has never been more important. So happy to see that it's progressing in that space. I'm great. Well, thank you to the panel. Um, we're going to go back to the slide deck. We only have a few minutes left and I want to hand over to Anne Cecile from TIP. Um, so one of the core objectives of the roadmap is to inform and influence decision-making within the sector. And so Anne Cecile, why don't you tell us a bit about the activities that stakeholders and those on the line can expect to see from TIP in the coming Thanks, months. Brian. And thanks to the panelists for highlighting the need to accelerate change. We appreciate that. And indeed the, the roadmap is a report it's a landmark, it's an inspiration, but we don't want it to be just a report. We don't want it to be only a report. We want really to this roadmap to be brought to life and that will require action from, from various stakeholders, but the TIP members recognize that they have a leading role to play in driving progress and bringing this roadmap to life. So I'll say a few words about what TIP members and TIP intend to do with this roadmap. So if you can go to the next slide, Rosie. Um, they have a key role to play both at an individual level and a collective level. So at an individual level, really the bringing the roadmap to life starts with the engagement of the members. Um, at an individual level, um, TIP members commit to engage with their own value chain and with their own stakeholders to use the roadmap as a, conversa uh, as a conversa conversation starter. Those conversations are already going on, but they commit to bringing that to the next level. Um, all of the TIP members report on their sustainability efforts according to international standards. They will continue to do that. That gives them the um, opportunity to demonstrate their leadership in, in bringing the roadmap to life. Um, in doing so, they can also leverage existing organizations. So these are the regional associations of tire makers, for example. These are organizations like TIP or GPSNR um, to really... Um, identify those actions that require collective action and to develop some tools, some frameworks, some methodologies to really help accelerating progress as well. And of course, they'll continue uh, exploring uh, new ways to collaborate with their peers as well, of course, within the limits of competi competition laws. One thing to highlight is that TIP members as WBCSD members have also committed to, um, to meet the updated WBCSD criteria, which will come 
uh, in plane 2023, which include a commitment to net zero with the science-based plan to achieve it, commitment to nature and biodiversity, a commitment to human rights, and a commitment to operating at the highest level of transparency. So if you haven't seen those, it's also worth a look because it creates a new benchmark uh, for leadership and sustainability. If you can go to the next slide, a few words on TIP, because TIP um, coordinated the development of the roadmap, but it also intends to participate to bringing the roadmap to life through its own work plan. So TIP focus on a few areas within the life cycle that actually match the, the different areas that are highlighted in the roadmap, so supply chain operations and product and services, and as such, through the work plan of TAP, we'll continue delivering research, for example, on TRWP, so on tire and roadware particles, um, delivering global knowledge and stakeholder engagement on end of life tires, and we'll continue developing methodology, tools, and frameworks to really help tire makers engage with their own value chain. So a few questions coming in around that. So these tools and frameworks are really important to, to bring the roadmap to life. Finally, last but not least, um, bringing the roadmap to life also involves communicating progress and ensuring that the roadmap remains relevant over time, so in the next 10 years. So TIP already um, collects and reports on a yearly basis some KPI, which are focused on environmental KPIs in the manufacturing scope of tire making. We will make an assessment in the coming year uh, on whether additional KPIs are needed to track progress of the roadmap and we'll implement those KPIs as of 2023. So I heard Amy say that KPIs will be absolutely key um, to measure progress on the roadmap. So we do intend to develop some KPIs. We'll also leverage, for example, the KPIs that GPS and R are developing as well. The intention there is not to duplicate, but but uh, on the contrary, really to bring together um, the different measures. And then I was mentioning that you know, global trends can evolve. We expect the SDG to remain relevant until 2030, um, but we'll keep an eye on global trends on potential global development. And we intend to issue a, an overall progress report by 2026 that will you know, take stock of the progress to date, as well as evaluate whether any adjustments or any new actions are needed within the roadmap to ensure that the delivery remains optimal all the way to 2030. So that's the commitment of TIP and its members. I would just highlight that the SDGs and sustainability overall goes way beyond the reach of any single organization. So we do you know, encourage everyone on the call to engage, to review the roadmap, to use it as a, again, conversation starter. Um, so whether you're a supplier, a consumer, a customer, a civil society, academics, I think there's, there's actions and, and potentially for engagement for, for everyone on the call today. So we really look forward to get uh, your ideas. Please reach out if you have any suggestions. And uh, uh, before handing it back to you, uh, Brian, to wrap up, I would just uh, again um, show the link of the website where you can download the roadmap and we will use this website to also um, add some content over the next month um, to share progress, to share best practices. So uh, more to come and the road to 2030 is still long, but uh, we are looking forward to the journey with you. So thank you very much and over to you, Brian. Great. Thank you, and cecile for outlining what's next. Um, we're at the end of our session, so many thanks to our panelists and our speakers today, and a big thank you to the over 200 attendees to the webinar um, who did join and celebrate the launch of Sustainability Driven. Um, please do use the hashtag Sustainability Driven. Um, if, if you share this on social media, that would be great. Um, as a close, we ask that you do raise awareness at your organization and consider how you can reference, integrate, and implement the roadmap actions in your own plans and strategies. And that's the way we can all maximize impact to achieve the SDGs. Um, and again, please do share any best practices um, with WBCSD and TIP via the website or by using the hashtag sustainability driven. Thank you everyone. Um, enjoy the rest of your day.